very good morning to you. This is me again, Dr. Sam, and this is the A300B, and we're uh, still on the other side of truth. Been talking about it for quite some time now, and I've been talking about the issues and the challenges that the novel is addressing. Um, how much do you still remember about the other side of truth? When I say the other side of truth, what, what comes to your mind? What immediately comes to your mind? Come to the mic. Nothing comes to your mind? Isn't that strange? Been doing it for how many times? This is perhaps our, th our third discussion. Remember, we started off last time and we did a regular class. And this is perhaps the second. And then we did a master class on it. But it's, it's very strange that you don't remember or perhaps you don't want to remember. Again, we spoke about the differences between this one and the other ones, and we said the difference is also very structural, structural in the sense that the previous two works were not novels, they were uh, picture books, but the other side of truth is a novel, is a full-fledged novel with clear uh, beginnings, um, you have developments, and uh, eventually you have a conclusion or, or a closure. Um, so it is, it is a novel, and it has all the characteristics of a novel. Um, we said that it was written in the early um, 2000s, it was published in 2000, which would make it uh, postmodern. And when we check for postmodernism in the work, we wouldn't find in terms of form, in terms of structure, because it's a, a typical novel. And like I said, uh, with clear uh, linearity, where things run in its trajectory, you have, um, you know, events moving from place A to place B to C and so on. So you have this kind of regular, uh, uninterrupted uh, trajectory that we're so familiar with in traditional novels. But perhaps what is most modern about this novel is the themes and the ideas that the writer is addressing. Spoke about the idea of immigration. And we said that it is a hot topic. It has been a hot topic for the past perhaps 20 or 30 years because of, you know, civil wars and uh, uprisings um, and occupation. We still have occupations, of course, in some parts of the world. So that would result in forced immigration. People have to travel from their home, uh, their homes, their countries of origin and uh, seek refuge and asylum in other countries. So it's a hot issue. And we have it here in the novel. Also, the idea of parents and their responsibilities and duties towards their kids when it comes to teaching them this or that principle. Um, there is a great deal that we stand to learn from um, their relationship between parents and kids in the novel. So this is also a hot issue. I mean, it has always been there. I mean, the idea. Uh, of, uh, you know, parents' duties and responsibilities towards their offspring. It has always been that, but perhaps it is more pointed uh, and highlighted in, in the novel. Also spoke about the idea of children and what kind of children, uh, you know, you would expect. You would expect children to be guided um, and guided in the correct way until they reach a certain age where they can take over and they become agents 
perhaps of their own and masters of their own fates and futures and everything. But what happens in the novel is different because child, we have what we call children or child agency where that child has at one point to uh, momentarily uh, overlook his um, childness, if you like, and behave like an adult in terms of taking up duties that are not yet his or hers for that matter, uh, taking matters into their own hands as children, deciding when it's much too early for them to decide things. So child agency is very prominent in the novel. And obviously we have child agency, not because we trust our kids and we try to make them mature before they reach maturity. No, it's not about that. It's about our perhaps miscalculations as adults, as parents. Sometimes we miscalculate. Sometimes we do stuff that we shouldn't do. And the end result would be that children have to struggle on account of those decisions and miscalculations that we make and take. And they have to rectify situations uh, totally on their own. Um, and this is happening in the novel. So as you see, the novel is rich with ideas and themes that we are likely to talk about forever if we don't set limits for the discussion, obviously. That would add, of course, to the vibrance and the directness of the novel. And perhaps this is one big reason why it is very successful. Successful because it resonates with uh, not only children, but adults. We also spoke about this idea of cultural literacy. The fact that Naidu is trying to create and develop um, literacy, a cultural one among uh, her readers. Uh, the white, green-eyed, blue-eyed uh, readers uh, in the West, especially if they are children. She is trying to challenge their received ideas about the other. The other can be African, the other can be uh, Indian, the other can be Chinese. And of course, they have those received ideas, those stereotypes about um, the other, the colored other, if you like. So Naidu is trying to say, no, this is, this should stop. We need to reach out to this other and perhaps do something. Um, the damage is already done. We have maligned them and we have done injustice to them for hundreds of years. So it's about time that we first of all start by controlling the damage, and then we think of perhaps reparations, think of how we can compensate them by giving them a spot under the sun, by acknowledging that they exist, by acknowledging that they have minds of their own, by acknowledging the fact that you don't have to be white, to make it big in the world as a scientist, as a, a politician, as a businessman. No, you don't have to be white at all. So these are some of the issues that the novel is grappling with very successfully as a matter of fact. Uh, okay, let me go back to my question. And I was asking about some of the takeaways, things that you um, are likely to remember um, uh, when you finish the course and you graduate and, and everything in between. So let's start with Lan. When it comes, of course, to well, I'm talking specifically about the other side of truth. Lan, go ahead. Uh, your your question was your question about uh, about what what comes to our mind uh, when we hear yes, the other side. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, 
um, even if I today hear it for, for the first time, I would expect that, that it is a novel, a novel, and unlike um, and unlike the picture books uh, like the, the Tale of Peter Rabbit uh, and others. You mean, yeah. you mean, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't understand you, Malish. What are you trying to say? Um, even if I if I hear the the title mm -hmm. uh, for, for the first time mm -hmm. for the first time I I will I will probably expect that it is a novel and unlike uh, the other picture books like Snow White and and Voices in the Park and it is it is um, it is kind of hugely different from other picture books. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, what other things do you guys remember? What are you likely to remember uh, after you finish the course about the other side of truth, if any? If it's a favorite. I remember we, we had this, we cast a vote the other day on which of them is your best. I don't know whether we included the other side of truth or not, but let's do this. Now you have three works, regardless of what genre they belong to, in terms of form. Uh, which of them is your best, is your favorite? Raise your hand and come to the mic. None of them is your favorite, Mahul. Okay. Alia. Yeah, Alia. Yeah, uh, I didn't read the uh, side of truth yet, but my favorite work is uh, Voices in the Park. I, fa mm -hmm. I found it really, uh, it's really uh, closer to our life because when we go to the parks, bark and we sit by ourselves, we think about uh, different topics in our mind and we express our feelings inside ourselves. So I find it really a uh, beautiful uh, picture book. So, uh, and it's closer to my childhood. I love that this kind of uh, books and uh, programs, uh, children programs. So I prefer it the most. Okay. And I love the idea about the fonts, the pictures, how yeah. the children uh, picture the adults and talk about them. It's related to our uh, childhood. So nice. I prefer it. Nice, very good. Thank you, Alia. Okay, Len, how about you? Also, uh, also uh, voices in the park, because uh, because um, it, and it, it, yeah, it is it is very good that uh, they, that they make the characters gorillas instead of persons. In order not to not to, uh, to clarify the the race and the and the discrimination or, or the injustices uh, in according to race and and uh, and in addition, you know, the, the, there wasn't any dangerous uh, the, a dangerous situation in the story, unlike a tale of Peter Rabbit. <coughs> You mean it's uh, safe? It's a safe reading kind of thing. You're into safety. You you want you don't want issues and problems and challenges. Life, actual life, is full of that already. But you don't want this um, also in novels and literature, right? You want to kind of fly away from the here and the now. You're an escapist reader. <laughs> So you don't want yes. to, but <laughs> that's nice. That's that's a category of readers where novels for them are one way of, you know, relaxing and entertaining yourself and amusing. Yeah, that's 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 very legitimate. Thank you, Leah. Uh, do you have other people reflecting on what we have been saying about the other side of truth more specifically? We have Wafa. Wafa, Wafa, are you here? No, Wafa is not here. 
Uh, okay. So it's the other side of truth, everyone. I'm still on it and still talking, still talking about the issues and the problems and the, the climate of ideas that trigger the whole thing. Um, remember what we said about Naidu herself being South African and not Nigerian and why she took up this job or this task of, of uh, talking about um, a Nigerian context, remember? Um, we also said, yeah, she is a political activist, of course, we said this, and in spite of the fact that she was white, she was all for the rights of the black majority in South Africa. So obviously she doesn't, or she wouldn't change. If she, if the issues are over and resolved once and for all in South Africa, she will stay the same, honest and um, has integrity. And if she sees injustice in some other parts of the world, she will react in the same way. And this is exactly what she did when she saw what was happening in Nigeria and Nigeria turning into a dictatorship under uh, the regime of uh, General Abashi at the time, in the 90s, I think, or perhaps late 80s. She took up uh, the challenge of exposing that through her characters, through the story that we are reading now, where you have two Nigerian uh, kids uh, fleeing for their life, uh, fleeing Nigeria and moving to England or to Britain, seeking asylum. Um, so uh, the novel is as much about Nigeria as much as it is also about London and the UK, because when the kids go there, they are not treated as kids. They are not treated as fragile kids who should be treated differently. If you have to, if you have restrictions and regulations that you have to impose on adults, you need to also remember that kids are different. You should ease the restrictions in order for the children not to be tra traumatized, in order for the children to uh, go through the transition very smoothly and without any psychological scars. But obviously this is not happening in London. Those two small kids meet all types of challenges, immigration offices, um, interrogations, harassment, and bullying. So it seems that Naidu is trying to say that England and London and the UK are not what we think they are. They are not safe havens, as they claim, obviously. Uh, you have to also go through a very, uh, I wouldn't say rigorous, because rigorous is a good word. You have to go through difficult procedures and processes in order to eventually um, be granted what you deserve, which is perhaps political asylum status for, for very good reasons. So perhaps this is one of the messages that the writer is trying to get across to the readers, that uh, the West and the developed countries are not what they claim they are. Um, obviously, um, when we talk about military regimes, and um, these are all the legacies of the white colonizer. I mean, when they first left Nigeria, they make sure that nothing will uh, work after they leave. They loot, 
they uh, keep the population ignorant. So this is their work, actually. Um, so and 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 also they keep at the time, and this happened also in uh, the West Indies. They at one point they told the population, it is true that we're going to leave you, but you're welcome to our country. You can come and you can work, you can start a new life. But the 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 sad reality. Or the reality is different. The reality is unfortunate and sad. When people go uh, to the promised promised land that we call England or the UK, they found uh, miseries, no jobs, um, discrimination uh, on based on race and color. So this is perhaps one of the messages that the writer is trying to get across to the reader. That this is perhaps um, is a reference to the title of the novel itself. It's the other side of truth. You need to think of the title. So there is a truth that the Europeans embrace, and we also have a truth that we think is the correct one when it comes to our impressions about them and about their systems. So when shade and um, her brother and behind them that father go to England, they think that it's the beacon of democracy, that things are easy, they are going to believe them when they say that they are uh, um, escaping for their life, and things will be easy, and the next thing you know is that they are granted the asylum that they want. But it was totally different. They were um, treated very badly. They were heavily investigated. Uh, so this is one of, one, one of the issues. Uh, so their truth, uh, or the European or the English truth, is that we are open, that we, we welcome people, we don't discriminate. Um, but for people who go through the experience when they go to England, it's totally different. They are not democratic. They are very discriminatory. They, um, their processes and procedures are difficult and they are made difficult so that people don't go to them. So perhaps one way of looking at the novel would be that it exposes European and white propaganda about, um, you know, European countries as being liberal, uh, as being open, as being um, accommodating and welcoming. Um, what else about the other side of truth? Um, of course, we spoke about media, and we said that media is very important in the novel, and we started to make those comparisons between two uh, uh, not type or not forms of media, because media is media everywhere, but perhaps uh, geography determines what kind of media you will have. So if we talk about Africa, so media in Africa is manipulated by the government. Media is spreading rumors and uh, misinformation about descendants, about people who uh, would not agree all the time with the government. But media in the West, and this is perhaps uh, what is given, and then there is, uh, uh, there is truth in what is, at least, uh, um, until now. Uh, media in the West is different. Media in the West, West can help people, can be the voice of the voiceless. If you have 
a cause and a case. You can find a platform in the West that can allow you to voice out your concerns and grievances. So perhaps this is one of the ideas that the novel is highlighting. Media, um, the difference of media, um, again, depending on the location and the geography. Um, and with media comes the idea of when to say what and how. So, of course, you know that with media, you have journalists, uh, you have reporters, you also have native informers uh, working or behaving like, uh, um, you know, media people sometimes. So, uh, perhaps the novel is also a lesson in when to say what and how. And you can always remember what the father did being a media individual, being a journalist, an investigative journalist, and what he did. So obviously not nobody is uh, against what he did. I mean, the idea of exposing the corruption of the government, uh, um, saying no to their perhaps uh, um, temptations and uh, not working within their file and rank, not appeasing them. Yeah, obviously these are very good things. Uh, and he should be congratulated on them. What is perhaps not good about it would be the timing and the miscalculations that uh, he made. So, of course, you remember what happened with him when the timing was not correct. The next thing you know is that his wife was shot dead, was murdered, if you still remember. So again, because he didn't choose the right time, right? Because he is working against a huge apparatus of oppression. It's a whole system. So you cannot fight the system unless you are well equipped with tools, and obviously he is only an individual. Uh, uh, he, he, he also perhaps needed to have remembered that he has kids and he has a wife. And he should have perhaps consulted with them before uh, subjecting their life to risks and dangers, right? So this is one of the messages that perhaps, yeah, it is true that being courageous is good. It is true that being transparent and being uh, honest is good, but uh, also there is what we call strategic patience. Sometimes you need to be patient strategically because you have, you're aiming at a higher goal or a higher purpose. This is perhaps um, is not happening with the character of the father. The father, it seems, is very impulsive. The father, it seems, is very unequivocal when, uh, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say compromising, when there should be some wisdom. And, and you, you can always compare him to his daughter, for example, and how um, she behaves and the calculations good at the art that she, she makes, when to say no, and when um, the no is going to weigh heavily on her uh, brother, for example, she would uh, go along and uh, uh, you know, and and kind of bend to the wind. Yeah, go ahead. You have a question, Leah? Uh, not uh, not a question, but uh, but uh, but when but when you described the the father, maybe he's uh, similar to Peter Rabbit in the personality. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's um, um, risks that they are taking, and sometimes you 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 see wisdom in what they are saying. You see um, kind of truth in what they are doing, and you you see justifications. But obviously, we're not talking about 
whether what they are doing is wrong or right, because it is good. If you think of Peter Rabbit, for example, and you think of the fact that he perhaps he was getting to Mr. McRuger and he was taking revenge for uh, the murder of his father, you may find some sense in what he did, some justification. But uh, the question is always when and how. So it's not about the why, because we agree on the fact that whatever the father is doing in the other side of truth is, is good. Exposing corrupt people is always good. But again, it's about when you can do that and how you can do that. Um, so this is one of the issues. And uh, what makes it even more highlighted and more, more prominent would be the idea that you're juxtaposing what the father does with what uh, the, the, the child or the, the daughter does. She is also uh, exposed to situations where she has to choose between being economical with the truth uh, or saying the truth. And she sometimes uh, chooses to be economical with the truth, which means that she may mislead, she may hide facts and she is doing that for a higher purpose she at one point she was kind of squeezed to reveal the identity of her father and his real name and she thought about it and she started to hide this because she knew that revealing his real identity would land him in jail this is number one and the next thing uh, is that they are going to deport him back to Nigeria, where uh, obviously he can be killed or executed. So this is something that she didn't learn with, with her parents. Her parents, whether the father or the mother, kept telling her that you have to tell the truth no matter what. You cannot, under any circumstances, lie. They didn't tell her. This was obviously theory pure theory, they didn't tell her that there is also strategy that you have to um, have. Um, you can strategically um, hide something because you have a higher goal and an opener goals. This is something that they didn't teach her. And that's why she was baffled sometimes, or perhaps most of the time, and uh, she was also uh, having those moral dilemmas. Uh, she has this, um, she's dogged with this moral ambiguity, if you like. She doesn't know what uh, she does is the correct thing to do. I mean, hiding facts about her father and behaving against her nature in those bullying situations where, you know, the, the kids were bullying her and she had to bend uh, to those um, pressures sometimes. Remember her father used to tell her that if you allow um, uh, bullies to get, to get their way, uh, uh, obviously they will keep doing this. Uh, she had to, when she saw that her brother's safety is at at stake and on the line, she decided to relent. So again, this is very this is strategy. It's not that she's bad, but she knows that being too good would land her and her brother and her father in trouble, no, further trouble, and they have they already have that fair share of troubles. See, so this was very strategic. This is something, this is a wisdom that we haven't seen with the father. So, and this is ironic because the father uh, traditionally and typically should have more wisdom than the kids because he or she, the father or the mother would kind of pass this kind of wisdom to the kids. So obviously we, the lessons that we are learning uh, in the novel, we learn from the kids and not from the parents. The parents are all to blame 
for being rigid, for being uh, inflexible, for being impractical, uh, for being, um, you know, kind of um, like I said, they are not very strategic in, in their decisions and they are very theoretical. Um, so this is all and, and that can all go under the idea of media. And of course, as you can see, the, uh, the, the themes and the ideas are, they enter uh, um, um, they 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 get mixed together. You cannot um, say that I'm going to discuss this aspect without touching on the other aspects. They, there is a great deal of overlap between and among the themes and the ideas. And this is perhaps the beauty of uh, what we're doing with the other side of truth. Um, I remember asking you to read the secondary sources, the secondary material. Essays. They, they are part of the, this larger book that we have, but I divided them into smaller chunks. So have you done that? Have you read the articles? Mm. No, yes or no? Uh, I I have read the uh, I have read uh, uh, only a little bit. Okay. How about the others? I don't know what is stopping you from doing what you're supposed to do with them. By the way, normally EA300B students are active. At least this is my experience over the past two years. This time around, I don't know what is happening with you. You're not as active as your uh, colleagues. And it's very also um, any kind of Said, you know, normally I expect uh, interaction. People say something and I rebut. I say something and people rebut. So this is how it should go. It should be bi directional. I shouldn't be monopolizing the talk as I am doing, as I am forced to do, talking all the time, because nobody is playing uh, along. Okay, what did you say, uh, Zuhur? Zuhur, you were saying something. She said uh, she is in the hmm. hospital, so she can participate. That's fine. That's fine, yeah, Zuhur. Are you a doctor? I'm <laughs> just kidding, of course, I know. Alf Salam. Uh, okay. Bye, bye again. You know, doctor, I want yeah. I want yeah. to say something about the parts and said that. You I want really to say want something to participate. About what? Yeah, go ahead. Part about the idea of our participation. I really want to participate and read mm. the novel, but you know, we, we are in the last semester and we can't find the time because we are training also. We have a training sub uh, course, so most mm -hmm. of our time working and uh, studying for all, uh, only quizzes and yeah. Uh, well, me, yeah. Let yeah. Me so just, you, uh, you don't follow. Let me just warn you against something. Yeah. The training course is out of four credit hours. The, your other courses, if you are in yeah. the fourth year, you're finalizing everything and you're graduating. You the likelihood that you have at least two eight credit hour course, 16 hours. Are you sacrificing the 16 credit hours or the eight credit hours 
for a four credit hour course that does not have material all you need to do is to go and train you work in a yes. school you work in a company are you yeah, sacrificing you the right. 16 credit hours or the eight credit hours if you're doing only one uh, eight credit hours left yeah are you sacrificing it's not, this it's, it's not good no, no no i will not for sure you are definitely uh, uh, right but you know this is our first experience and we get really tired because we work i'm i'm talking about myself i'm working in a school and i come back at 3 p.m and I'm really, really tired because the children is take take all your time. So I found only time to only memorize the little things. I didn't find time to write, uh, to read the sorry, the novel. So I because of at that, least, I at least, at least, at least, and I'm talking I'll to everyone. I read the summary. At least, um, from what I see now, is that you, you uh, people didn't even. Uh, listen to the recording because this is not our first class uh, with the other side of truth. But when you ask questions and nobody answers, it means that people didn't even bother to uh, listen to the recording. Okay. See, so yeah. again, uh, we've been talking about miscalculations and we are trying to learn from the miscalculations of the parents and the father and the other side of truth. And we are so implicated and involved <laughs> in miscalculation. Again, you shouldn't sacrifice 16 credit uh, hours uh, for yes. a four credit hour course. This is my message to you. Anyway, yeah. um, again, the other side of truth, if you give yourself the, uh, the chance to read or to at least listen to the recording and um, perhaps read a summary if you're oh, so uh, so pressed against time, you will enjoy it um, all the more because of how relatable it is. Remember, we said that th this idea uh, that it's about our times and it's not too kiddy. It's not as kiddy as the tale of Peter Rabbit so you may feel that this is too childish perhaps yeah you can have ideas and you can come up with so many themes but you still you feel that it is meant for kids and i'm not yeah. a kid but with the other mm -hmm. side of truth it's totally different yeah you may have kids as main characters but this is obviously not the whole of it they are part of a system that would also involve uh, people who are not kids and we're not kids so we're part of this system when it comes to immigration um who who of us is not an immigrant in one way or another or yantazir like they say okay you go and live in another country this is immigration right you apply for a scholarship next year inshallah when you graduate and you go to England or to the US or Japan to do a master's or that, this is immigration. So when we talk about immigration and the other side of truth, it's very relatable. It's something that you either uh, or your parents is doing or you, you yourself is going to do in the near future, right? right. Um, yeah, that, the story yeah. related to my experience. I left my home when I was 12 years old, so I understand all the concepts that you are discussing with us, and I uh, challenge. Uh, yeah, I face all this, these kind of challenges because I travel to different uh, countries. I found. Mm. Uh, uh, I face a culture uh, shock. We say. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard on the kids, especially mm. when we have a uh, uh, younger. Uh, brother yeah, sometimes you ask uh, yeah, sometimes you um, because you don't know as a kid you okay. ask why why is this happening to me or to my yeah my family, as a kid i example. always asked why mm -hmm. why i should mm -hmm. to uh have sacrifice to go like this, this. Yeah, well, yes. i have to go through this uh telling my sister to do that or to do not mm -hmm. and we are in foreign country so i understand all of the things that the kids in the story uh, went through
Yeah, that's and, and this is what I'm I'm saying. We are, <laughs> uh, I mean, inside every one of us, there is an immigrant. Uh, perhaps is an already immigrant or is uh, um, be, is soon becoming one. Uh, let's hear what Aisha uh, wants to say, and then uh, go to Leanne. Aisha, you you wanted to say something. Yes, doctor. I was going to yeah. say that immigration is. Um, I feel like it's different than uh, um, studying abroad. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, immigration. I mean, it, it comes in different forms and shapes. It can be yes. forced, forced immigration, where you are dispossessed, you are displaced, you have to leave your country, you are persecuted by even your own government. Sometimes you have to seek refuge on, uh, on this account and uh, moving. Uh, if you go to another country and live in one year, this is perhaps the, the latest definition of immigration, that if you go and live in another country, even in one day, you, even if it's legally, <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to go through the gate uh, at the earth that is called immigration. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense now. Uh, yeah. So... Again, it's, it's about being separated from your family and your, your loved ones. And you go there, whether you're forced to go there, even if you apply for a scholarship and you go there, you, you're trying to pursue your dream, you still feel that something is missing. You miss your family so much, right? Uh, these are feelings that all immigra uh, immigrants, regardless of what kind of immigration they are doing, they go through, right? Yes. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that your old yeah. self, and you you missed all the things that you have done in your country, and you want to do it again, but you can't because you are in different country, and this is one of the bad uh, consequences of immigration. Yes. Um, again, it's um, uh, what I'm trying to say that it touches um, sensitive chords in among us all. Uh, Leanne, you're raising your hand. Go ahead. Uh, I think uh, that uh, that shade, uh, since she has a large, uh, a large awareness, like uh, like adults, so um, uh, she she maybe she was supposed to, in the beginning she was supposed to tell her father to. To, to to beg her father not uh, had not to do, not um, not to immediately uh, say something against uh, against the government in, in Nigeria because maybe uh, because maybe maybe would yani their uh, because maybe the, uh, their situation will will be will be awful and um, yeah and yeah to, to, yani she was supposed to she was uh, and tried to, and she was supposed to um, to convince him and maybe her father will rethink and um, uh, and maybe will stay in the, in nigeria for for a little bit maybe what do you think i think she was um, a kid back then and um, it's only when she went to England and went through those difficult situations that she became, she grew up mentally and intellectually, and she was able to to maneuver and to uh, to hide uh, the truth momentarily. But when she was uh, in back in Nigeria, she was a small kid, and she was not. Uh, life was easy before her mother got killed. She, she was a normal child living her life, going to school, reading, studying. There were no challenges. The challenges started when they decided, decided to travel and when they went there. So when she went there and she, she went through those challenges that she became mature and she, she started to calculate things. Okay, are you getting my point? She only changed, yes. she became mature when she went to England, not before that. So, so we wouldn't blame her for not doing enough to prevent her father from doing what he thinks is the right thing to do. I mean, exposing the corruption of the government and all those kinds. Okay, 
Uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break and when we come back, we can talk more about the novel. Yeah, I'll see you in 10 minutes, inshallah. Okay.
हेलो कैन यू हेलो यस या इज इट क्लियर आई मीन माय वॉइस इज माय वॉइस क्लियर लाउड इनफ यस ओके गुड ओके सो लेट्स डू समथिंग एल्स टुडे व्हिच इज अगेन ऑन ऑन एंड अबाउट द अदर साइड ऑफ ट्रूथ but perhaps let's take uh, a passage or two from the novel and try to uh, closely look at it and break uh, the passage down to its basic components highlighting the themes and the ideas involved um the significance of what people say and what they don't say so let's do just that and I'll, I'll introduce you to two passages they come from different parts of the novel and uh, let's talk about them um again um so how are we going to go about it i'm going to introduce the passage and then allow you like three minutes to read the passage on your own um and then uh, we talk um while reading you may want to kind of take down notes and stuff like that have that Doctor, I have a question. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the novel uh, was it was it written in in two uh, thousand or in nineteen and ninety five? Um, I think um, I I read somewhere that it was written in two thousand. But even even if it yeah. was it was written in nineteen ninety five, that would make it also postmodern. So, and because they are close, I mean, you're talking about uh, five uh, years. The difference is only five years. But it's um, again, it's the time period is postmodern. This is uh, this is actually what counts. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to do now is I would like you to read this passage. And uh, whenever you have a passage, um, normally passages taken from novels are about people and about action and events and uh, of course the the um, the we, we, when we choose a passage for you to comment on those passages are normally very significant we just we don't just uh, choose something that is insignificant so uh, we have a goal in mind and we're trying to kind of Uh, ask you uh, about this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the themes of the ideas. And this is how you should approach. So you read something, you read it very uh, quickly first, if you have time, and normally you have time, you can read it twice. One time in order to get a, an overall uh, um, idea about what is going on, and you read it one more time for detail. So this is what I want you to do, and I'll give you four minutes for that. Read it for the first time, and tell me that we are, I read it uh, for the first time, so that we can talk about the overall impressions, and then I ask you to read it one more time for depth and more clarity and all those kinds and themes and ideas. Yalla, go ahead. You guys have two minutes for the first reading. Go ahead. I have read it um, uh, a few days ago. Okay, read it again.
done. Are we all done? Yeah, let's read it one more time for detail. This time around, I would like you to stop and think and think of the significance. Think of the choice of words, what they mean, whether they have um, like a, perhaps um, a more embedded hidden meaning. Uh, try to think of it, uh, link it to other parts of the novel and stuff like that. Negotiate with um, the passage with the meaning. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about it. Uh, if you have to give a title to this passage, what would what, what would be your title? Let me check. Now that you have read it twice, remember? So what would be a convenient title for this? What's the theme? What's the main idea? The main idea was Can I? Uh, mm. okay. Go ahead. Okay, you can, Alia. I just wanted to say about the main idea was the little girl wanted to say the truth to the lady about how they entered the country and they changed their name, the last name. She you mean she was grappling with this issue? Did she ma make up her mind or she was kind of, she has this, are you trying to say that she has this conflict? She doesn't know whether yeah, she has this to conflict. say, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm, okay. So, okay, so it's this moral ambiguity that she is grappling with. She doesn't know whether not, uh, whether with holding the surname would uh, would be correct because she's not trained not to tell the truth remember this is what her parents mm -hmm. used to tell her that she has to be unequivocal about the truth no matter what happens she has to tell the truth. so she has this kind of thing okay La Leanne, you wanted to say something
Okay, so, so this is the main issue here, the fact that we're talking about truth telling. So, and obviously, towards the end, and the interest of the family, she decides not to, to say everything. And the decision not to say everything is a form of agency. This is child agency at its best. Okay, so the passage has two things. One thing is about truth telling and what happens when you tell and what happens when you withhold the truth. And, um, and of course, you would refer to what she was raised uh, um, believing and, uh, uh, and practicing. And then you talk about the idea that towards the end, she decides to withhold, not to tell everything. And, and obviously, this is agency. And she is a child, so this is going to be child agency. So you, if you have a passage like this, you wouldn't give me a sentence or two. We expect you to uh, elaborate on the ideas. You need to highlight uh, the characters and to think of, uh, of the different roles in the passage and in the overall uh, scheme of things in the novel, what part they play, and then focus on the protagonist of the piece. And the passage has a protagonist or has a central figure uh, who happens to be shade, of course, and uh, the fact that she's grappling with this idea of truth telling, whether to tell or not to tell. And of course, that would uh, invoke uh, memories about what her parents used to tell her. And that decision that she eventually takes uh, um, in the sense that she decides not to tell the whole, whole truth and uh, perhaps hope for the best because Nathan, the uh, immigration attorney, is very investigative and he is good at it. And she was fearful that he uh, may be able to know that she is uh, lying. So this is a passage among so many. And uh, uh, it, um, it tells you, of course, about the character of uh, Shade and the agency that she is projecting as a child. So you talk about this agency part and you also talk about truth telling. And uh, yeah, again, you would refer to uh, the upbringing that she received by her parents and now the situation that she is in and this kind of moral ambiguity that she is going through and all those kinds of things. And again, you also refer to the fact that children shouldn't be uh, kind of subjected to those kinds of uh, calculations and choices at this very young age. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah, uh, Leanne, you're raising your hand. When you asked us about uh, about uh, that, uh, what was the title that we may uh, put put on this passage the mm -hmm. benefit the 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 positive and the negative uh, co consequences of telling uh, the whole truth um let's let's be clear about it telling the truth is always good it's not about uh, um you you make it seem that telling the truth can be bad, uh, which um, I never meant to say. What I meant to say that there are situations where you have to be strategic about uh, truth telling. Um, you may withhold part and say the or tell the other part. It's it's about calculating the uh, consequences and the risks involved. If you're doing it for a nobler cause, that's that's fine. But we're not implying under any circumstances that telling the truth is bad and that telling lies is good. No, this is not the message and this is not uh, the message of the writer uh, herself. Let's move to another uh, passage and see uh, what um, it addresses and the different issues involved.
Yeah, I would like you to read this one. Yeah, I think it starts here. Yeah, read this one. And again, you're going to read it twice. One time uh, would be skimming, reading it uh, for an overall understanding, and then you read it again for detail. Go ahead.
Are you done reading it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so what I want you to do now is that I would like you to go through it very quickly and highlight the parts that you think are very significant and are very important. So that when we put them together, we come up with the theme or the main idea of the passage. So I'll, I'll give you uh, a couple of minutes to go through the lines and highlight uh, of course, you, you cannot highlight uh, unless you have the book. I mean, uh, tell me about those parts where you think are very significant and are very important. Yalla, go ahead. I think the wait. most is the important. Wait, wait, wait. Are we all finished? Okay, Ty, let's talk about it. You have the passage and I would like you, let me see how many hands for this under, un, underlining business that I'm talking about. If you're ready, if you have, so we have Alia, who else? Because I'll show you the passage and you. Uh, I would like you to read the things that you think are important. So we have Alia and Leanne. Who else read the passage and think that there are significant parts in it? Unfortunately, only two people are reacting and this is very disappointing, of course. Um, okay, Ty. So let's talk about it. Let's start with Alia. Uh, Alia, I would like you to highlight two parts or two, uh, you know, areas in the passage, and then we we'll go to Leanne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Which line are you having in mind? And, uh, the line with Baba, where did you grow? Uh, appeared. The description of the uh, the father's look. Uh, where is that? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Baba, why did you grow a beard and mustache? Femi wrinkled his nose. Here until, uh, say it. But Shada didn't want to say it. And then? Uh, I want to highlight all these uh, lines under this line. Because I found it uh, important, the description of the, fa uh, mm. the father's look. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, um, the uh, yeah, here, they become uh, very worried. The agent assured them that Mrs. Uh, Pankle, uh, about the telling, uh, they wasn't telling the truth. Before the before the last paragraph, uh, the agent heard you know, them. Baba wanted to tell them everything when he and Uncle Thunder couldn't contact Uncle mm -hmm. Daly. They... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All this paragraph, I want. Yeah, I found these two paragraphs important because the first one describe how the fathers look and they how they didn't uh, know uh, know the uh, know their father. Recognize uh, him. They couldn't recognize yeah, him. Recognize him. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, recognize him because uh, he was he was trying to hide his reality or his uh, uh, his face and his body 
to to protect himself mm. okay. and the second one i, fi- I found mm. it important also because uh, the the person that he, they was contacted with him, with him uh, he was he wasn't telling them the truth that the kids are safe or not okay uh, Leanne, what are the things that you're going to highlight that you think are important and significant? That, uh, what was, um, he, he pushed the class aside and, and yeah, the, the third line, he pushed the class aside and in, in great are his arms swept up the children. Shade mm. or said felt all stiffness give way as Papa pressed, pressed them to his chest. Uh, with Papa's breath in, in her hair, the tears spurted hotly down her cheeks. Um, they uh, they soaked into her father's shirt as she, as she heard as she heard the, as she heard the, his uh, shocking voice repeat their names. Okay. Anything else or anywhere else? Mm, and also, um, and also, um, that yeah, like like uh, Alia said, the agent yeah. assured uh, until until to be arranged. Okay, Hi. let's talk about the theme of the passage. It is, what is so significant about the passage? What is the passage about? What part of the novel is it about? And what, what theme or themes it, 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 um, it reveals? No. Mm. Uh, Dina. Okay, no idea. Then, uh, familial uh, reunion, familial yeah. reunion. Yeah, family reunion. Right, family reunion, and what comes with? I mean, the in- intensity of emotions <laughs> and the bindings and the feeling. I mean, you, you can almost cry with them, right? you can almost feel the emotional toll that this has uh, on yeah. on everyone right yes this uh, familial uh, reunion has its uh, emotional emo- emotional significance or em- mm. or a very a large impact a emotional yeah. large impact mm. yes mm. what else anyone and everyone Um, okay, so again, it's very, um, sometimes it's very heartbreaking, I mean, to see, uh, it is true that it is a happy moment where they, uh, they get re- reunited after all those things, but it is also, uh, it, if, if anything, it tells us about those situations where family members are scattered all over the place, there is no chance for them to get together for political or whatever reason. Um, and how it feels, I mean, you can almost tell that these are very difficult moments for everyone, even for the passerby. If you happen to pass by them and you see them or happen to overhear them, it can be um, very hurting. It can be very... Uh, you know, kind of uh, unnerving and unsettling. So this is what this part is about. It's about this kind of reunion where you can tell from the way they look at their father and the questions that they ask him. Uh, um, again, it's 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 um, a moment again very pregnant with uh, with genuine and real emotions and feelings and, and everything in between. 
um, again, you would uh, obviously link this up and tie it up with the rest of the novel where, with other situations that would uh, um, perhaps um, show um, also the amount of, of responsibility that the, the, the father has for his family and for his kids. Uh, the fact that he he wants to listen to everything that they, and he wants them to say everything see the, the, he is of course a keen father we may have our differences with him but he is again he was doing what he was doing uh, with his uh, um, you know uh, kids uh, welfare and well-being at heart and in mind make make no mistake about it um so this is also a very significant passage that i mean the reading of the passage does not stop at, at the passage you need to uh, again tie it up with other parts of the novel and you would try to look for and explore the underpinnings uh, the things that connect all the threads together, and they are many, I promise you. Um, unless you have any more questions, we're going to call it a day. Um, when we meet in the master class, I think I'll start the revision. Uh, I'll start revising the three works in the master class. If I don't want to miss them on the master class this time around on Thursday at 8 a.m. like you know. Um, yeah, Leanne, go ahead. You're asking a question, go ahead. No, I forgot to, uh, to drop my hand. That's fine. Okay, so on this note and with this item, we'll come to the end of today's lovely class and I'll see you on Thursday uh, in the uh, somebody's asking a question in, in the master class of course somebody's asking let me see doctor my mic is not working so i was answering in the chat i also sent you an email about it. okay that's fine yeah Dina, no problem yeah i'll see you inshallah on thursday salam alaikum alaikum salam